Welcome to the weekend edition of the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Jenny Taft. Today's podcast features all the best segments from this week's slate of Undisputed. With in-depth interviews and discussions, we have a lot to talk about heading into next week. Skip, Shannon, let's get to it. Is Dak Prescott better than Cam Newton? Is Matt Patricia already on the hot seat? And did Tom Brady end the GOAT debate? Uh, We're going to need to talk about that one, but we're going to start with the NFC East. The Cowboys are ranked 25th in the latest USA Today power rankings. Their offense struggled big time in their week one loss to the Panthers, scoring just eight points. The Cowboys are also dead last among NFC East teams. The Eagles are ranked number one overall. The Redskins are eighth and the Giants are 19th. Shannon. Are the Cowboys too low, 25? Well, I think the Cowboys are ranked just right. Uh, Of course, if you saw them on Sunday, you would know Skip Bayless. I I saw him, but maybe my TV was broken. Okay, did you see him? If you don't mind me asking, did you see him cross midfield in the first half? No. Okay, then. So, therefore, they would be ranked accordingly. Is football just played for Whoa, whoa! I I don't know. I don't know. Maybe your football's played just for the first half. I don't know. Help me out. You know what, Six Kids? See, I was going to be nice. I'm not in the Hall of Fame. Uh, See, I was going to be nice today. I was going to, you know what? I'm going to be nice to Skip today. But now you ask for it. Yeah, actually, it is. I like it this way. Skip, the reality is this team isn't very good. The blueprint is let's shut off Z and see what Dak can do. Mm. And I keep telling you, Mm. Coach Saban has a great saying. He says, trees do not grow to the sky. Everybody automatically assumed after Zeke's rookie, Zeke, Dak's rookie year, oh, he had 26 touchdowns, four interceptions. The next year, he's going to be 35 and seven. The year after Mm. that, he's going to be 40 and five. No, Mm. he's not. Mm. Stop with this. You Wait, need to – what? We just quoted a failed pro football coach? Whoa, 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 Seriously, whoa. that's what we're, we've resorted to that? You've relegated your argument to, to a failed Miami Dolphins coach? This, this, I don't get it. Here's the thing, Skip Bay. Let me tell you a little something. What you do is that you shoot for the stars. Mm. But if you miss the stars and land on the moon, you're damn sure pretty high, aren't you? Mm. Coach Saban, he shot for the stars. Yeah. He missed it in the NFL. He missed. But he landed on – but he's the greatest college football mm. coach. But we're not talking about him. Let me talk about these pathetic you, Cowboys you it up. and that offense. What we're seeing is that they come out with a game plan, the opposing defense. We are going to stop mm-hmm. Zeke Elliott. Yep. And if Dak Prescott can consistently mm-hmm. and accurately throw the football down the field mm-hmm. and win this ball game, yep. so be it. Okay. But Ezekiel Elliott is yep. not going to be the – Skip, you mm-hmm. saw that. Didn't get to midfield yep. in the first half. Got mm-hmm. sacked six times. Yep. He was inaccurate. Mm-hmm. Was, was he not, Skip Bayless? Is it my turn? No, it's not your turn. I'm, you can just respond. You can just nod your head. No, I'm yeah. not going to do that until it's my turn. <laughs> Skip, he was, he, was, he was really, really mm-hmm. inaccurate. Yeah. Uh, and, and, but the thing is that you're going to look at his stats and you see, well, 19 or 29, mm. but guess what? He was dinking and dinking. Mm. Nothing down the field. Mm. Nothing. And mm. that's going to be a, a reoccurring theme mm. because if you look at the receivers that he's throwing to, mm. whoo, mm. I think right now I can get out there and get a couple of them. Mm. Maybe but skip, good. They're the twenty. I think they might should be behind uh, mm-hmm. uh, Seattle. Mm-hmm. I thought Seattle played better than they did. Oh, so you got them at twenty what seventh then or twenty sixth? As long as they're at the mm-hmm. bottom, yeah, that's where they should be. Okay, not middle of the road, bottom. Bottom. Okay, tell me when you're finished. Capital B O T T O M. Bottom. That how you spell that? Yeah, yeah. bottom. <clears throat> you finished? Thank you. Yeah. My turn. Here we go. So, I'm going to start with your starting point. I will bet you five cases of Diet Mountain Dew that in the final USA Today power rankings after the final week of the regular season, Mm -hmm. the Dallas Cowboys are above 25. Want to bet on it right now? No. Why not? Because. Put your dew where your mouth is. You just said they're right where they're supposed to be, at the bottom. Didn't he say that? I'm quoting him. But you. B-O-T-T-O-M. Hold on. You just told me it's only week one. Well, I just kicked your bottom. That's what I just kicked. (laughs) Right? How about that? You tried to get a sucker bet. No, Man, that's not a, a – why is that a sucker bet? Dude. He just said they should actually be lower than 25th. They, they okay, should, well, right put now. it up. Put it up. Right. Go ahead. Skip. Oh. It's week one. We got it's 61. It's one game. It's exactly. one game. Hey, so, and they ranked them after one game. Okay. So, I'm going to say it again. This will be a wild card team. No, it won't. And I am still seeing this glass as half full, but most of the world wants to see it as completely empty because a majority of the NFL world hates the Dallas Cowboys. Nobody goes over the edge, over the top, overreaction the way 
most fans do about the Dallas Cowboys. Am I right, Mr. Sharp, president of the Dallas Cowboy <laughs> Haters Club? Am I right about that? You're right. Thank you. So we have extreme overreaction to one game. So allow me to remind a few people out there who have half a brain, who have an open mind, that Ezekiel Elliott had not played a football game until Sunday for 252 days. That's eight plus months of no football game because obviously he played zero football games through the preseason. Right. So you have to go all the way back to New Year's Eve of last year to find a football game that Ezekiel Elliott played in. Okay. And I already told you, and I'm being objective about this, after all the raves I heard out of training camp here in Southern California, that Ezekiel looked sleeker and more explosive than ever, I did not see that physically fit Zeke on Sunday. He classically needs to play his way into shape. And dare I say that even by the second half, he started to show me a little bit more because he was shaking off the rust and getting the cobwebs out of his brain. Maybe he had a big pregame meal. He might have had a big (laughs) pregame meal. Let me remind you that my quarterback, Dak Prescott, that you continue to ridicule on this show, had not played a football game until Sunday for three weeks and a day. That's a long time to wait for a quarterback who, by the way, has all new receivers. So he- All the more reasons he should have been playing in the preseason. Thank you. So my quarterback, Dak Prescott, played a grand total in the preseason of 39 snaps, while 41-year-old Tom Brady played 69 snaps in preseason games. Think about that. 69 for the 41-year-old. 39 for the third-year quarterback with all new receivers. Yes. They're all new. Yes. There's no Dez, obviously, and obviously there's no Jason Witten. Correct. So there are various Michael Gallups and Hearnses and Deontay Thompsons mm-hmm. and Blake Jarwins. It, it, he has never played a football game mm-hmm. with any of them. You can throw them all the camp balls you want to throw. It's not the same until the real bullets are flying, yes. especially the one that's flying out of your hands to them. Yes. Because they're going to react differently under fire in Carolina. And speaking of that, I first guessed it. I said I could not think of a worse place for this team to start than at Carolina. I'm going to say it one more time. I watched the third dress rehearsal preseason game, New England at Carolina, and Tom Brady played the whole first half. And trust me on this, he looked about as bad as Dak did because they couldn't protect Tom Brady and he couldn't find many open receivers. He barely threw for 100 yards and they scored a grand total, New England did, of three points as Cam and the first team defense played the whole first half and won it 9-3 to three head up. And it was sort of the same game that I saw Sunday. Mm-hmm. You know, what, what was the final? 16 to 8, 9 to 3 at halftime. So it was sort of on course to be the same kind of game against New England. That front is fierce and physical and stout. It's hard to move it out of there. I'm going to say it again. Matt Ryan and Drew Brees will look fairly ordinary when they have to go to Carolina. So this is a tough place to start, especially when you're running back that the offense is quote unquote built around has not played in 252 days and doesn't look in that great a shape to me. So, speaking of first half versus second half, Shannon Sharp, Mm -hmm. the football games I watch have two halves to them. And and you know what? Silly me. Sometimes I count the second half. I weight it a little heavier than I do the first half. Why? (sighs) Because in the second half, my Dallas Cowboys had 172 offensive yards. Not all that bad against that defense. My defense held Carolina in the second half to a grand total of 84 yards. Is that good? That's pretty good, 172 to 84. So, but you wait, had 50 th- in the first half. We, we more than doubled them in the second half. Oh, okay. And by the way, Carolina in the second half went 0 for 5 on third down, and as b- abysmal as we were in the full, full game because we were 2 for 11, but we were 2 for 6 in the second half on third good? down. It's not that bad. It's better than Cam Newton's offense did. So all of a sudden, as you shake the rest off, as you start to get into some game reps, you start to get into the flow. All of a sudden, I started to see the team that I thought I would see. And by the way, it was mostly without a Randy Gregory and another cloud hung over my team. Again, I thought they were going to have a little hangover from the Earl Thomas. You know, they didn't get Earl Thomas, and I thought there was going to be a little bit of a letdown in the locker room. That could have been operating. But there was also a new cloud early Sunday morning from a report by uh, ESPN's Adam Schefter that it looked like Randy Gregory would be suspended again for another violation of substance First abuse policy. First of all, policy. Bayless, you guys are pig pen from Charlie Brown. Mm-hmm. There's always a okay. cloud over your head. But 
Jerry Jones, for once, did not speak to the media after the what? game. Is that unusual? Is Barry. that out of character? But Jerry said on his radio show, yes, excuse me, radio show yesterday that the purpose of not speaking to the media was that he just didn't want to have to talk about Randy Gregory because he was so mad about the reports that just keep coming out that Randy Gregory is going to be in some new danger of suspension. Mm. And Jerry Jones said yesterday he knows nothing about that. He said as far as he is concerned, Randy Gregory is eligible to play against the Giants Sunday night at right. Jerry World unless he is hurt. And by the way, another bad break I got. He's in concussion protocol as Randy Gregory and also has, according to Jason Garrett, some kind of knee issue. So he was gone for, it felt like, about three quarters of that game. And still, my defense looked top five-ish, maybe top ten-ish, somewhere up in there. My defense looks like it's going to keep them in every game. But that's not what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to be an offensive-based football team because your talent is over mm -hmm. there. Remember, you have Ezekiel Elliott mm -hmm. and you have Dak Prescott and you got three of the top – five linemen, top six, seven linemen mm -hmm. in all of football. Now you're depending on your defense. What happened to that mm -hmm. quarterback? That's Brady-esque. Now, I'm going to be objective about this because I'm always objective about my Dallas no, Cowboys. No, Unlike somebody sitting no, you're across not. from me or somebody sitting in the middle on this show, not objective about the <laughs> Dallas Cowboys. You want me She's to add a hater. On this? She's a hater, but I it's mean, okay. 25? It's okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, there we go. There Just we go. Just checking. I have concern bordering on fear about my offensive line because it's starting to smack of, it's starting to smell of overrated to me. I'm just being honest about it. That's my only almost fear about this team. That, wait a minute, Zach Martin? I know he had his knee tweaked and all, but I, I don't see it. Tyron Smith, best left tackle in football? I for about the last, I don't know, eight games dating back to last year, I just haven't seen them dominate people. Obviously, Travis Frederick out, it's a huge blow. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't like it. I can't help it. I think Don Looney's decent, but he's not that guy. He's not a top three center. Well, he has to fill in. That's right? what Big V did for Jason Peters. And what I hate about this coaching staff, they get all caught up in their pride. Look what we did. Look who we drafted. And they stick with their draftees to a fault because – Maybe they're just not as good as you want them to be. Right. So they stick a raw rookie out of the University of Texas, Connor Williams, in at left guard yeah. in this dominating yeah. offensive round front. Pick. Second round pick. Should have been Dallas Goddard, but Howie Roseman of the Eagles drafts up and snakes him right out from under Dallas one pick <laughs> ahead of what Love became it. Connor Williams. Love it. Connor Williams got his bottom handed to yeah. him by Kwan Short the other day. That's what's supposed to it happen. was domination. It was humiliation. It was an overmatched rookie. And by the way, I watched closely all the preseason games, and every time I looked at Connor Williams and studied him as the play unfolded, I'm just watching TV, not the coach's tape. It looked like he was getting knocked back off the football. He was. I don't like it. I don't like it. So again, could they swallow their pride the way a Bill Belichick would? Because he'll just make moves on the fly right and left. No. Would you take Lyle Collins, who belongs at left guard, and sticking back in there? Because speaking of Bill Belichick, Cam Fleming was the best pickup Jerry Jones made in the offseason. He went and got him a Cameron Fleming, who I used to like protecting Tom Brady. Was he not pretty good for the yeah, Patriots? Yeah. So you stick him at right tackle against the Giants and move Lyle Collins back to left guard. Now maybe you got something. Get the kid out of there. I, I mean, he's just, he's overmatched. So why would you stick? You know, pride goeth before the fall. That's what the Bible said. Well, here we go. Are you going to fall with Connor Williams? Yeah, you've been reading too much of that <clears throat> Cowboys Bible. You keep telling me the glass <laughs> is half full. Yep. It might be half full, but it's half full of poison. Yeah, okay. So even if you drink half of it, Skip, you okay. know what's going to happen to you. Then put your poison where your mouth is. No. 25th, let's make that bad. No. You said they're the 25th worst team they in the league. right now. Okay, well, st what are they going to be? All I care about what's coming up, what's happening. Happening. They're not going to the playoffs. That's what's coming okay. up. All right. We got five cases to do on that. We don't have five cases. Well, we got three. 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 We got cases. three. We got three. Go up. Okay, he, three. He's just like he's in the power position. I there. am. I, I am. I look. I am one game. I'm in hey, control of this. If you saw what you saw what snack you saw what a uh, 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 K1 short did to mm -hmm. him. Now he gets snacks. Harris. He does. He get big snacks. Yep. Yeah. Now, you talk about getting pushed back in the backfield. Could be like a bedtime snack, right? Ah. Late night snack Still, in the East. At some point in time, when are you going to come to the realization mm -hmm. that maybe Dak has plateaued? Maybe the best you'll ever see of Dak Prescott was his rookie season. What if that's the case? I thought he was really good last year. I thought he was really good. And I'm going to save it because we're going to do a whole head-on shot on Dak here in our next block on the show. Yeah. So I'm not going to go into gory detail, but I'm going to say it again. You gory. gave him an F for last year because F. you wanted him to Failure. fail because you Whoa. suddenly jumped on the 
Carson Wentz bandwagon that you were not on when he was a rookie. Yeah, that what? Carson Wentz was awful as a rookie. And I, Dak Prescott was sensational as a rookie. And if you take the two game, the, the two year cumulative performance, Dak Prescott has been much better than Carson Wentz. If you go look it up, it's documented. Mm-hmm. I said I would still rather have Carson Wentz, given what they were asking him to do yeah, you, over Dak Prescott. You were vacillating. No, we don't no vacillating. Yep. It yep. wasn't nothing. Wishy, no, no, it wasn't no wishy washy. Mm-hmm. And I'm tired of you keep on trying to reiterate what I I understand. Yep. I'm well aware of the grade that I letter mm-hmm. grade that I gave Dak Prescott. Mm-hmm. F, F as in failure. And by as the way, Jenny, he yeah. was so bad that he plummeted it in overall QBR to fourth in the National Football League. That's an mm-hmm. F grade if I ever saw one. That's F minus. Jenny, Jenny, he was so bad he, he, he dropped four games. He, he went flunked. from 13 and three to nine and seven. He flunked. He didn't have Ezekiel Number Elliott one for over- six games. He didn't have Sean Lee for six games. He didn't have Tyron Smith for four games. And he still finished fourth in QBR, and the team went nine and seven? How great is that? And the great- Seriously, look, how great is that? Look at what Russell- That's regression? Look at what Russell Wilson has. Ugh. The good ones, Skip. I like it, Russell Wilson. I think he's the, really good. The good ones, mm-hmm. they don't talk about who's not there. Mm. They get it done with who's there. Okay. Okay, you keep telling me if he's that guy that you gave an A or B to, he's mm-hmm. got to deliver. Mm. He got to bring us home. He got sacked six times Sunday. He got hit 10 times Sunday, and it was in large part because his offensive front got dominated by the defensive front of the Carolina Panthers. And you know why? That's, yeah, that's the truth. That's me, the God's truth of what me, happened let, Sunday. Let me explain something to you about football. I don't care how good your offensive mm-hmm. line is. If you can't run the football mm-hmm. and all the, those defensive linemen, all they know you're going to do is pass it, mm-hmm. they will come take your quarterback's head off. Mm-hmm. And Dak Prescott, they fear, put no fear. When Zeke Elliott cannot run that football, mm-hmm. they're like, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Barbecue like Shaq says, barbecue chicken. Dak Prescott sitting back there looking like a big old Popeye's meal. Two-piece with the biscuit. And guess what happened in the third quarter? All of a sudden, Dak and Zeke said, Yeah. Barbecue chicken. We got some over here. We finally figured them out. We got back in some rhythm here. And And they go 75 yards in 10 plays, Mm -hmm. and it was reminiscent of those great long Dak drives. Yeah, back in his rookie year. Yeah, Yeah, I remember those. And his second year. I remember those. We had a bunch of them against the Rams and – and you like Stevie Wonder. You wish those days would come Aaron back again. Aaron Rodgers though. last year, boy, he was really good. They Kansas lost to City. Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, but they shouldn't have. Yeah, they should have. Yeah, look at this. Dak had a QBR in that game of 97 on a scale of zero. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Wow. You know it was what? his fault. You keep telling me, okay, the first half they didn't cross midfield. You go to the third quarter. They I, had a I t- go to the second half. Okay, they had a 10 172 play. to 84 in they had a, yards. Wow. 75 of it came in one drive. Oh, it's pretty good. What was Cam doing meanwhile? Cam had to leave. How about your little McCaffrey that you love? What was he doing in the second half? Hey, put on. Did he play in the second half? I don't even remember him playing. Putting on a clinic on Sean Lee. Oh, maybe they put him on ice. Putting on a clinic on Sean Lee. Maybe he took too many shots running up the gut. Uh, They just had to put him on ice. Sean Lee. Sean Lee couldn't tackle anybody. Where was Sean Lee? Uh, Sean Lee had four tackles. Busting heads. No, he wasn't wasn't busting. He wasn't busting. He wasn't busting. And and what? Hold on. I saw him on the sidelines in the fourth quarter. And you mentioned the third. Can you tell me what the Cowboys did in the fourth? Mm -hmm. Because Cam says, if I don't turn the ball over, you can't beat us. You know what? The Cowboys got so blown out that with a minute and 51 seconds left in that game at Carolina, as miserably as they played, they had the ball back. And it was a one-score game. Who knew? It was a one-score game at that point. Was the game that oh, close? Oh, it, it was a wipeout. It was so just like was, was Denver the game last that year. Really, was the game really that close? Yeah, it was. It was a one-score game with really one left, and my guys got the ball at the 20-yard line. Objects are not uh, as close as they appear. I don't know. That's, I know. That's called one-score game. I know. And what happened? Had they gone for two and gotten it the previous touchdown? They had. If, if he's that guy, he's got to bring it home. Uh, so again, thank you. I'm glad you said that. As poorly as they played, mm-hmm. they had an opportunity with one minute, 51 seconds, mm-hmm. and a timeout to go down there, get the touchdown and the two-point conversion and tie the game. Mm-hmm. And what happened, Skip Bayless? Right on cue. Dak Prescott, running for his life, did something whoa, very whoa, uncharacteristic whoa, of him. Whoa, whoa. He does not turn the football yes, over. Yes, he does. He does not. Last year he did. He did not. Last year not he like did. Not like most quarterbacks no, do. No, he tripled from his rookie year. Mm-hmm. His rookie year he threw well, he four inter- all-time great as a rookie. And, yeah. and, uh, and I just said that, yeah. Skip. So you, you want to gloss over that. What if he plateaued? Hmm. What if that's the best Dak Prescott you will ever see? Has that thought ever crossed wanna, your mind? Want to take my back? Whoa, 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 hey, well, it's all look, it, every team goes as far as the quarterback will take it. Oh. I say Dak Prescott will take the Dallas Cowboys back down the list toward number one of from twenty five. Number one on what? On the power rankings. Stop, uh, you, you said they're twenty fifth. Take it. 
Take I, it right now. If you had any guts, you would take this bet. Because you think they're one of the worst the teams. Only number- you already said they're not a playoff team. Take the bet right now. I'll do 3K. I'll even do one case. Look, I'll let you off the hook. First, the hook that you're on right now. P- power, first of oh. all. The only good power I know is 50 power. Mm. You, you watch that show, don't you, Skip? Mm, yes, I do. Uh, exactly. So with that being said, Skip, it's one week. Right now, they rated them. Okay, where are we right now? Yeah, okay, so here's the point. My Dallas Cowboys have what I consider a crucial game on Sunday night at Jerry World against a division rival that did lose at home 20-15 to 15 to Jacksonville. Jacksonville's pretty good. Man. We'll see how good Jacksonville is this Sunday at home against Tom Brady, won't we? Yeah, we'll yeah. Cases. But we the, got two cases on that game. We do not have two oh, cases. Oh, we're going to put two cases. Yet. Oh, yeah. We're going to put something on that game because I got Tom Brady in that game. Okay, the point have- is... This is a north-south game. It's not like into the world game because it's only week two. Oh, but, it but it is a north-south game for my Dallas Cowboys. If they look as pathetic, as overmatched as they did at Carolina, I will come in here on Monday. I will sit right in the seat as I always do, and I will say, you were right about this. They look awful. Whatever they look, I will say however they look. But I don't think they're going to look awful because I think they shook off a lot of the rust. I think they will snap right back to life, and I think they will beat the New York Giants, and I think we will come in here on Monday, and you will start to be in the trouble you're going to be in increasingly throughout the year. So I need you to go ahead and gloat today and tomorrow and Friday because it's going to be all you're going to have if this you notice, year. I didn't have to no, get it out of your system. I didn't Enjoy cele- it while it I lasts. Didn't, I didn't celebrate. I didn't do any of that. Mm-hmm. But this is what we do know. Teams that start the season 0-2, 85, 90% of them don't make the playoffs. Mm. For, for someone, one of these teams, Skip Bayless, mm-hmm. it's going to be a long season. It is. Well, you say it's Dallas, so you want to bet on 25th or, or worse? No. 25th I, or worse. That's what you're saying. If you, so what good is it? What good is it? If Why you, wouldn't you take if, that if bet? You, you think they're terrible. You, you think me, they can't score on anybody. If you don't mind me asking, what good is being ranked 12th if you're not in the playoffs? So you can be ranked 12th and miss the playoffs and you get three cases. But, Come but, on, Skip but, but the point is, you say they're one of the bottom feeders. They are the right now. In week one, they're bottom feeder. That's why they're ranked. I'm willing to bet three cases of Diet Mountain Dew. They are not a bottom feeder. They are right now. Okay, well, take the bet. No, I don't know where they're going to be. You're Hall of Famer. Forecast. Look ahead. Tell us the future, Mr. Hall of Famer. Tell us. I was going to major in atmospheric science, but they didn't have that major at Savannah State. They didn't have meteorology either. No, they had mythology. (laughs) So I had to major in criminal justice. Aaron Rodgers' mythology. (laughs) So with that being said, (laughs) I don't want to – who I look like? Willis Scott? Huh? Uh, Mark McEwen, I don't predict the weather, Skip Bayless, but I know this much. You, you look you like look, Nostradamus. Yeah. Man. That's who you are. You lost. Yeah. So take that L yeah. and leave. Okay, gloat all that you can because it's going to end quickly. No, it's not. Before you know oh, it's no. going to end. Oh, I, I promise you, I'll be gloating more days than I want. Mm-hmm. Will you want to be- put a case on that? Well, we already did. Yeah. That's what one case is for, right? Yep. I just really wants some do over here. Twenty fifth or worse, <laughs> you, you come right out of the box. They're one of the worst teams. Worst. They should be lower than twenty fifth. Saturday was one of the worst mm-hmm. teams of okay. opening week. You're, you're scared. And I'm not going to you. Never, scared. never that. No mercy. The debate of who's the best quarterback in the NFL between Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers just got a new twist. ESPN's Ian O'Connor shared a big reveal from Brady on Sunday. O'Connor tweeted, quote, Tom Brady once told an NFL coach if Aaron Rodgers had the Patriots' offensive scheme and institutional knowledge on opposing defenses, he'd throw for 7,000 yards every year. He's so much more talented than me. That was a quote. Shannon, do you agree with Brady? And no, that coach wasn't Bill Belichick. Mm. I know what you're thinking. You think it was Coach Belichick that said that. Have I spoken yet? No, Not you yet. haven't spoken, huh? but I know you. So now you're putting words in no, my mouth before no. I speak? Hold on, Skip Bayless. Huh. This is my time. Hold on, Judy said Shannon. He was yeah. handing me the football. No, I was not. No, no. I Gotta took it back. Gotta start with Shannon. He's nice it. to me. Yeah. Go to Shannon oh, first. Yeah. Shannon. And, and we could change this, no, yeah. but Shannon first. Oh, if I fist bump, it would yeah, change. It would change yeah. really Possibly. quick. Possibly. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Brady said if Aaron Rodgers had the offensive scheme and the institutional knowledge on opposing defenses, hmm. Oh, my goodness, what would he be? Didn't Tom Brady used the word institutional. Institutional. Mm, that's mm-hmm. interesting. Yes. Mm. Big words. That's Tom. Mm. Golly gee whiz, Tom. Mm. I keep telling you, Skip Bellis, this is why I give Coach Belichick so much of the credit. Mm. Because you're talking about the greatest defensive mind in all of football. Mm. Preparing his quarterback every single week mm. for what he's uh, probably going to see and things he hasn't even thought of. Mm. Because you know what, Skip Bellis? <clears throat> 
when they get together, Coach Belichick says, Tom, when you're in this formation, this is where you're weak at. Hmm. This is where I'm weak at. Oh. He's also giving that information to Josh McDaniels and keeping Josh McDaniels ahead of the curve also. Mm-hmm. Skip Bayless, that, that, if you notice, look at Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning only played for defensive head coaches. Why? Because he's like, y'all just messing up. Y'all getting my way if you're offensive mm-hmm. line. I know this, this right here, mm-hmm. I don't need help with that. I just need to know when it's third and three and there's 46 seconds on the clock mm-hmm. and we're in this formation, mm-hmm. what would you do? Mm-hmm. To stifle me. Yep. If we're in this situation and we're this, this down in distance, mm-hmm. in this area of the field, what's going on in your head, Coach Belichick? Mm-hmm. And Coach Belichick can partake, this is what I'm thinking you're going to do. This is where I'm vulnerable. This is where you're vulnerable. Mm-hmm. And so I'm going to play to my strength and I'm going to try to force you to your weakness. Okay. Yeah, that's immense. Tom Brady, did, nobody will mm-hmm. ever, ever confuse and say, well, Tom Brady is. No, he's mm-hmm. not. There might not have been. Fundament, throwing the football. There's never, ever, Aaron Rodgers has no weakness throwing the football. He's as fundamentally sound as you can get. Mm. What makes him so unique is his ability to throw the ball in and out of the pocket Mm. accurately. To the left, to Mm. the right, wrong foot, Mm. doesn't matter. As we saw Sunday night, Skip Bayless Mm. on a bum knee. Tell me when you're finished. It's not not finished. Jenny, does he get to let out the clock? Stop rushing We're finally, we hear, oh, oh, we we got a brap. Fair debate. I'm timing it out. You know know what, Skip? Jenny's enjoying this. Keep going. (laughs) I didn't say anything. Just talk the rest of the show. I'll just sit back and listen. (laughs) I didn't say anything. Because you're actually digging a hole, but go ahead. When you took 13 minutes and 14 Mm. seconds in that first segment, I didn't say a word to you. (laughs) I didn't say one (laughs) word. Yeah, 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 you did. I didn't say nothing. I only needed three. But you took 13. Yeah. Skip, nobody's going to ever say Tom Brady is more talented than Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. We know that. Mm-hmm. But the, what he's, what Tom Brady said is absolutely true. Mm-hmm. Now, he's not, Aaron Rodgers not throwing for 7,000 yards. 5,000 is very doable. Mm. Very, very doable. Mm. But because he has t- uh, a Coach Belichick and the knowledge that he has, remember, Coach Belichick has a game plan, not a play, mm-hmm. a game plan. Yep. That's in the Hall of Fame because what he was able to do to the Buffalo Bills 1990 offense, the K-Gun. Mm-hmm. Skip Bayless, this is not even close. Tom Brady spoke the truth. Now, golly gee whiz normally opens his mouth and says mm-hmm. absolutely nothing. Mm-hmm. But what he said, uh, uh, I guess it was, year, I don't know when he said it. But, oh, uh, that's interesting. We don't know when he said don't it. Don't know, but hold oh. on. He said it. Huh. How do when, we know he said but it? Hold on. Wait a minute, Skip. The fact that when he said it, where he said it, what he said, is inconsequential. Mm. We got it. Oh, now, with that oh, being okay. said, <laughs> yeah. you know and I know yeah. that that guy on the left mm-hmm. of the monitor. Yeah. Oh, he's way better than the guy Ooh. on the right. Yeah. He's way better. Yeah, the greatest thing. As you said, I'm going to quote you. It's not even close between the guy on the left and the guy on the right. The guy on the left has played in one Super Bowl and managed to win it. I'll give you that. And he's five and six since he won that Super Bowl in the playoffs. Five and thousand. six? Five back and the six. Thousand. Wow, that's interesting. It is interesting. Meanwhile, that guy on the right, just since he won a Super Bowl, has played the greatest fourth quarter in the history of the Super Bowl. That was uh, 124 yards in the fourth quarter against the Legion of Boom. And then the next year, he, he played the, the greatest fourth quarter and overtime in the history of the Super Bowl with 246 yards passing and two more touchdown passes against the Atlanta Falcons as they came back from 28-3. to three. And then he topped it off last year at age 40. This is still during the Aaron Rodgers prime, right? Mm-hmm, yeah. With 505 yards passing in a Super Bowl, which is the, the, the most yardage any quarterback in any playoff game in the history of pro football has ever thrown for, and he did it on the biggest stage, the Super Bowl stage, against a top-five defense. What are you doing That's what quarter? he's been doing since that guy came into the league. And by the way, since that guy came into the league, he has had four Pro Bowl receivers, and this guy over here has had just one since he came into the league. Okay. Just one, Wes Welker, and he's had four over there. Or well, Gronk don't count? And by the way, he had Randy Moss, did the guy on the right, yeah. number 12 on the right, the real number 12, the number no, no, 12. No, 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 yeah, there's right only there. one 12, yeah, and it's right there. Plenty of Terry Bradshaw. That guy oh, did have Randy Moss plugged in, right mind, you know, all in for one year, 2007. What happened? Records happened, yeah. didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. It, it felt like he threw for 7,000 yards that year, didn't so it? So if you give, if you get, so let me ask you a question. If you were to give Aaron Rodgers mm-hmm. maybe a top three receiver mm-hmm. in the history of the game, mm-hmm. they're not going to put up those kind of numbers? He could. He, he could put them up, but they wouldn't win. But That's see, the here's point. the thing, Skip Bayless. Tom Brady's had the luxury that very few quarterbacks get to have. You play this long with one head coach, one mm-hmm. system, 
Yep. One owner and the same and the same offense. Very few players can ever say that in the mm -hmm. history of the game. Mm -hmm. But you want to exclude Coach Belichick. You want to give him a minuscule amount of credit mm -hmm. when he deserved tons and tons and tons of credit. Mm -hmm. You might not like his personality. Yeah, he's persona, mm -hmm. and yeah, he comes off as – Shannon, uh, you, you keep sweeping under your little rug over there. Why well, you got a rug over here? You got a rug. That Bill Belichick, before Tom Brady, fell, fell out of heaven into his lap. Bill Belichick – Chick. It's Chick, actually. Chick. Chick. It's C-H-I-C-K. Well, but that's not how he says it. You know that. Get a man Bill Bella Chick is how you spell it. It's Chick. Before that, he had been a head coach for six seasons. Okay. He had lost five of the six seasons. Yes. He had had a losing record mm -hmm. until Tom Brady arrived. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's, this is for perspective. So I got a question here about this quote. Was this quote uttered directly to Ian O'Connor from Tom Brady? No. No, he heard it secondhand from an assistant coach. When was it said? Was it said in 2008, 2009? No, I don't know. Aaron Rodgers wasn't even starting then. Yes, he so, was. No, Aaron Rodgers didn't start until 2000 what? Eight? Wasn't that his first year? Okay, first maybe. Year. No, so obviously he didn't say it then. Well, I don't know. He might have seen him as a rookie and said, Stop, well, No, you well, know what, Skip, man. No, I'm serious. Because if we're talking beauty contest, it's not even close. Does it matter? That's the only place you can say not even close. Does it matter when he, he said it? He can throw that if football. If you don't mind me asking, Skip, does yeah, it, it took three when... years to rebuild his delivery for coming out of Cal. Hold but, on. but you didn't say anything, but Tom Brady couldn't beat out Brian Greasy. Mm. You do remember that, right, in college? That could be the fault of the head coach. Whoa! Right? Oh, now yeah. it's the fault of the head yeah. coach. He but, couldn't but be. You know what? I watched that Orange Bowl that year against Alabama, yes. and I saw this kid named Brady, and I didn't even know who he was. Did he really. win the national and championship? I keep, I keep watching, and I Did keep watching, and I say, this guy's the MVP of the Orange Bowl, and he looked really Did good. Did he win the national championship? Well, he's splitting time with some other quarterback. Whoa! Mm -hmm. What well, they got to do? Huh? Well, if you, well, that's if the he, coach's fault. But all I'm saying is, Skip, sometimes things happen. Okay. Coach, better. now. What do we know about Tom Brady? What did you call him? Golly gee whiz or whatever, yep. right? Yep. yep. Tom Brady, the greatest football player ever. He's not. Leads the league still at age 41 in what quality? Humility. Oh, my goodness. He, he is humble to uh, a fault. That's right. Not, that's when, not whenever how he talks time to, versus time. Whenever, well, but whenever he talks to somebody from another team, let's say it was at a Pro Bowl back in 2010 or whenever it was. I don't know when he it was. He ain't been the one. Uh, huh? He ain't been the one since probably 2008. Who? Tom Brady. Hey, he don't go to the Pro Bowl. He doesn't go to the Pro Bowl. He gets selected. That, that's but he, all, that's no, all no, 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 no. Oh, been to one. Okay, no, right, right. No, he gets Whatever. selected. I, I don't know when this could have been, when he would have crossed paths. Was it on the field in Green Bay before he and Aaron Rodgers hooked up in Green Bay? When was it? Three, four years ago? You say ago? you try to parse okay. his words. Okay. What, when would he say this to an assistant coach on another team? Off the record. And, and what would he say to any assistant coach on any other team? It would be humble to a fault. It would be gee whiz, aw are shucks, you, Tom Brady. Are you saying Coach what, what did he say publicly the other day about his guy Gronk? He said, we have to live up to Gronk's greatness. Can you imagine any other starting quarterback, a certainly superstar quarterback in this league, ever saying that about one of his receivers? We have to live up to him after all that 12 has done in his career? And he says, we have to live up to Gronk. And you know what? It comes from his heart. It's who he is. You know He's what? that nerdy dad next door on Instagram, you know what, right? You know Am I what? right? Maybe, maybe, you, you're right. Maybe. So, so this is just the usual phony baloney coming out of Tom's mouth. This is how he speaks. No, no. Oh, if he played for us, he'd throw for 7,000 yards. Maybe, you know how he is? Maybe That's had, how he is. You know, maybe I had too many of them CBD mm. gummies mm. in my dressing room, but mm. I feel oh. nauseous. I, I feel yeah. nauseous. Skip, baby, you need to stop talking about Tom Brady that, like that's this. That's exactly how he speaks. He would say that about Russell. Wilson, he'd say no, about he anybody. No, yes, he would. No, if no. Russell Wilson were in our system no. with all the knowledge that no. we have, he would throw no. for 7,000 no. yards. Yeah, he would. That he'd guy. say it about Drew Brees. He would have said it about Peyton. He would say it about anybody. No, no. Yes, he would. I mean, you know it, and I know. Oh, it's how he speaks. Because they would. Yeah. But he, I don't know if he believes that 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 that, uh, that uh, Peyton Manning is is way to more talented than yep. he is. And you know what? This quote is exactly why he's so much more valuable than Aaron Rodgers because Aaron Rodgers would never say this about anybody else. So now you said he said it. Uh -huh. Well, I'm so just, now you said he said that. I mean, I'm, just, I'm having to do the hypotheticals. That's what no, our no. whole question's built on. Oh, no, no. I'm saying. Are if you he, calling Ian O'Connor a liar? No, I'm not. I'm saying if he did say this, he did it. It's exactly it. who he is and why he's so great. Because I'm going to say it one more time. I have known dozens of expatriates and worked with them everywhere. Yes. They've come on this show right and left. I have never heard one discouraging word about Tom never. Brady. Not one you. negative word. I've heard a lot of negativity about Aaron Rodgers because he's a diva. They be hating. He is LeBron to this guy's Michael Jordan. He is LeBron Stop. James. You ain't heard nothing bad LeBron, about Peyton? 
Huh? They like they love Peyton. Okay, fine. But Peyton isn't Brady. He just couldn't do what Brady has done in the postseason. A- exactly. He was better than Brady in the regular season. Give me if you had given him Coach Belichick, mm-hmm. we'd be having a different discussion. Yeah, the coach who had lost five or six years as a head coach but, and was almost out of the. Can, he was about to be a permanent defensive can, coordinator till that guy came can out. We, of the can sky. we talk about what he's done in mm-hmm. New England? So can we talk about Aaron Rodgers, who is a finger-pointing blame deflector. You know it, and I know it. We hear it from Greg Jennings here on this show. Greg he said has, he misspoke. He, has, he did not say that. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers has constantly alienated his receivers. He's constantly taken shots, negative shots at them. It's why he's not nearly the leader Tom Brady is. Tom Brady leads that we're whole not, team. We're not, our, we're, not, yeah. we're not debating. That's not up for discussion. Yep. That, that Aaron Rodgers, yes, he points fingers. Yes, he places blame when some of the blame should go on him. Mm-hmm. There's no question about that. I'm not debating that. But what I will debate you and what I feel very comfortable in saying, that Aaron Rodgers is a better quarterback mm-hmm. than Tom Brady. Is he that, as accomplished? Absolutely not. But are you, if you're going to sit here and tell me that if Aaron Rodgers had Coach Belichick for 18 years, 19 years, that he would be any le- because his- You keep missing the point. Belichick has had Brady for 18 years. That's who made him. No. It makes it all go. He's the ultimate deodorant because he comes in every day. Yesterday was an off day. You know what he was doing? He was studying all day. We saw it in Tom versus Time. He's the one who's calling Josh McDaniels and saying, hey, I got one here. All Let's great try this. Do that. He designed the offense. He, he runs the offense. He, he runs it on the field. He coaches I'm the offense. I'm not going to let you do this, Kim He's Bayless. coach on know, the field. I know what you're it's, trying to there's do. There's nothing like this guy. I know what you're trying you to know, do. You know, it's it's performer. What he does is he leads and he performs. You, you, Aaron Rodgers is cooler. He's hipper. He does better edgy, funny yeah. State Farm commercials. I'll give you all that. No, I give you all that. I'm not going to let you sit here and try to make it seem like Tom Brady does something on his off day that no other great quarterback does. All these guys. Nobody study. works. As hard as this yeah, Skip, how, get, how can you qual- how can you qualify how hard somebody works? I, I just know. He, how you just know? He he is the brains of this operation. He is. All I'm saying, the general manager said they would take they would take Aaron Rodgers. That's what they said, Skip. Mm. They can have him. I don't care what they. The say. players said they'd rather have Aaron Rodgers. That's what I, players said. No, they did not. The players said the NFL players poll this year had Brady number what one. What was the fifty? See, now you're just making. He got stuff. hurt. You're you're backpedaling. What, now you're just what pulling out. What happened? Suits. Did he get hurt? Mm-hmm. Did he get hurt? Yes or no? I don't care. That oh, now you don't care. Well, it shouldn't affect how you vote, who you want right now. One guy's 41 years old, and you the, the players all say, give us that guy. Well, you said you – said, They when, know. Hold on. When Zeke got yeah. suspended and he was down in the 40s, you said mm. Zeke is better. Zeke's the number one running back. Mm, he is. No, he is. What do I – Well, he just is. I, he, he, That's not I just, how the players voted. Okay. All right. That's fine. I'll give you that. Okay. Tom Brady's – Aaron Rodgers is number one. No mercy. Jalen Ramsey took on Odell Beckham Jr. last week, and it – won't get any easier this Sunday against Rob Gronkowski. The last time Gronk saw Ramsey was in last year's AFC Championship game. Gronk only had one catch and then had to leave the game in the second quarter with a head injury. Before this season started, Ramsey told ESPN the magazine that he didn't think Gronk was good. Yesterday, Gronk responded. Take a listen. There can always be talking, going back and forth, uh, tempers getting heated up and everything. You just got to keep your cool. And uh, I mean, I don't see any benefit uh, to get a 15-yard penalty out on the field because you lose your cool. And uh, so you just got to keep your cool and keep your head on straight. Shannon, who will win this matchup? I think uh, I- I'm going to take Ramsey, but a lot is predicated on that front four. A lot of times when you see a one-on-one matchup, Skip, we automatically think it's, it's just between those two guys. But one guy's offensive line and the other guy's defensive line need to do their job in order for you to do your job. Um, The thing is, you can't give Gronk a steady diet of anything. You can't say, I'm just going to press him the entire game. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. You need to press him some. Mm -hmm. You need to play off some. You can't play off all the time because Tom Brady just raise up, throw him the ball, and then you got heck on your hands trying to bring that big guy down. We we can feather or what we call shadowing. Line up in a press position. Just don't let him get get his hands on you so he can grab you and throw you around. But just stay, you know, shadowing. You know, every once in a while, have the linebacker run up underneath him. Uh, doubling, doubling, double him up. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you give Tom Brady a steady diet of, okay, this is the way they're going to play Gronk, he'll pick you apart. Mm-hmm. So you have to do a lot of different things. <clears throat> and the thing is, we've seen Gronk lose his cool. We saw it against Buffalo, Skip. Yep. Mm-hmm. The guy held him, got an interception. Gronk didn't like it because he had felt he had been being held all the time. Mm-hmm. Officials weren't calling it. 
And he lashed out, hit the guy, and he ended up getting suspended. And what, what position did that guy play? Corner. Tredavious White. Yeah. First round pick, late first round. So, LSU. the thing is with Gronk, I don't think mm. Gronk is much of a talker. Mm. And this is what I always tell guys. You got to be true to who you are. If you talk, keep it going. Yeah. If you don't, yeah. don't get into a ball game with a talker and feel you've got to try and out-talk him. Mm. His game is predicated on that. Some guys, Skip, can play and talk. Some guys can just talk. Some guys just play. Pick your lane, stay in there, keep it moving. And if Gronk, if this is not who you are talking back and forth, if you don't talk back and forth, don't get caught up in what Jalen Ramsey saying because Jalen's going to talk. Yeah. That's what these guys from Florida State, a lot of these guys from Florida State, that's what they do. Mm. Now, time wasn't much of a talker. but when, that, that is true. He didn't talk. But nobody was talking to him either because you was already going to be about Deion Sanders. Deion Sanders. Yeah. You, you didn't want these problems. No. You didn't want that smoke. So... For me, I think Jalen Ramsey will get the better of this matchup. And plus, we get to see his theory put to the test. He says the analytics show That's what he said. that when the corners cover Rob Gronkowski, he's next to nothing. Yeah. He, he said he has, quote, unquote, a very bad game. Mm. Okay. Yikes. So now Jalen Ramsey thinks he's one of the top two or three corners in all of football. He gets to go against Rob Gronkowski, the guy that he says that when you put a, court, a, a cornerback mm. on him, Mm, doesn't do very much. Mm -hmm. So we got a top three corner going against the best tight end in all of football. We get an opportunity to see. Mm. You get to put the data to the test, Jalen. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be watching. Mm. I'm going to be watching that game. Scott. World will be watching. No, I got to watch that game real yeah. close because, you know, one guy plays the position that I play. I know that position very well. Mm, interesting. So I'm going to give – at least on Thursday, Jalen Ramsey the edge in this because I have nothing but respect for him as a football player because he just might be the best corner mm -hmm. in pro football. Mm. Okay. He's big, strong, fast. Mm -hmm. He's bigger than Dion. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And he is capable of backing his, his trash talk up in this right. case. And I think mostly he will have the advantage in this matchup. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many times he'll actually get him single, but mm – -hmm. But I think a bunch. Right. And, and I think he will mostly back it up. So I believe he spoke the truth about their analytics. I just didn't love it that he spoke it. Right. Mm. Because Interesting. when you go all the way to he has very bad games, that's a little exaggeration. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm not sure Gronkowski ever has a really bad game. Right. Really, he was saying, in general, any time a corner's been on him, he's had a really bad game. Especially not when he finishes the okay. game healthy. Maybe if he gets Nick Skip. So, as you know, there's something to letting sleeping dogs lie. There's something to leaving it unsaid. If you think you have an advantage, don't reveal it. Yeah. Don't let them try to fix it, right? right? Correct. Because as we speak, Tom Brady's trying to fix it. He's right. trying to plug that leak, mm -hmm. right? Yep. That, that hole. And to me... This is sort of today's kids. Everybody's look at me. Everybody's on social media. But to me, Jalen Ramsey is trying to do exactly what Richard Sherman did about, I don't know, was it six, seven years ago? Mm -hmm. Richard Sherman brilliantly tried to speak himself into national existence, right? Mm -hmm. Because he just picked out all the biggest targets and he went after them. Mm -hmm. And he was very good at it, but he was very selective because he made sure he would go after them after they had played, you right. know, there, there wasn't a lot of pre stuff. Correct. Jalen's the opposite. Jalen's taking on the biggest targets in his sport, mostly quarterbacks mm -hmm. and Gronkowski. And now he's got to go back it up because it's future. It's right. coming back at him. And I think he loves it because he's talked his way onto magazine covers, yeah. right. right? Has he not become a household NFL name that he was not? He's, he's the go to guy when you want information. Right? <laughs> well, because he does speak. A lot of truth. Mm -hmm. He's and, one for one now, Skip, because okay. what do you say about Eli? <laughs> okay. So he's one for one right, right now. So Rob Gronkowski is volatile, man. I mean, he comes off as this happy-go-lucky galoot in these yep. interviews, yep. but you know he's got one loose screw because oh, yeah. we saw it against Davis White because he, mm. he lost it, man. Yeah, he did. Just for a second, he lost it. That was a corner covering him. Right. The corner grabbed him and held him and pushed him. And, you know, it, it was a foul on the play. Yeah. So he just went over the edge because it's a corner. And so he's going to get a lot of corner right in his face, right. a lot of talk right in his face. So the, the point, the difference between Rob Gronkowski and his quarterback is Gronk has a little trouble channeling his rage because right. you have to channel it into your right. performance. The quarterback, on the other hand, that's one cape you don't, tug on. That's one cage you do not rattle because he has mastered the art of channeling rage, which right. is why I call him Psycho Tom. 
He doesn't look like Psycho Tom. He certainly doesn't come across as Psycho Tom in any interview. Yeah. But all of a sudden, <laughs> he will lose it on the field in a good way. Right. And if by chance he does get Gronk loose for a touchdown, I promise you the first guy in the end zone yeah. to congratulate Gronk and headbutt him right. will be number 12. Mm. And he will also be the first guy to turn to Jalen Ramsey and tell him all about it, I what hope, just happened. I hope Gronk doesn't give him a, a concussion headbutt him because really they're going to be, very, be very, very happy. Skip, mm-hmm. you remember in the Super Bowl uh, and that kneel down situation, Gronk got into it with some of the Seattle and Gronk was like, Everybody else was throwing punches. I'm like, what the hell? I might as well start throwing punches also. (laughs) That's true. But the the thing is, Skip, is that the ultimate sign of respect, and I felt it as an insult if a team didn't put their best cover guy Mm -hmm. on me. Yeah. So for them to bring Jalen Ramsey and say, Gronk, we have the utmost respect for you. Mm We're going to give you our best. Mm -hmm. And that is Jalen Ramsey. Gronk will view that as a sign of respect. He will be on his best behavior. You better believe you're going to get the best Rob Gronkowski. Mm-hmm. So what you thought you saw last week against the Houston Texans, you'll get even a better version of that this week against mm-hmm. Jalen Ramsey. Now, Tom, when you, got it, when you got that guy throwing you the ball, He's going to make sure. He's going to give him some opportunities. He will try. Yes. He will try to figure it out yes. before the game, and yes. he will try to execute. Even if he just gets him one yes. good time, yes. that's what Tom Brady lives for. Yes. That's what he's playing for right and, now. And you know what? Hey, we're going to make you fight through some picks. Mm-hmm. They might even stack Rob Gronkowski. They'll put him in motion. Because when you put the, excuse mm-hmm. me, when you put the guy in motion, Skip, and you see Jalen Ramsey, yeah. I know his man. So – you Tom, do? Tom Brady wants. You're his, right. They will do that. Tom Brady sure. wants as much information pre-snap as mm-hmm. he can possibly get. Yep. And the more information you give him, the more likely he's going to bust you up. So, Jalen, you got your hands full, bro. You said that when you put a corner on Rob Gronkowski, mm. he has very bad games. Mm. Now, bro, mm. you better not have no bad games. Mm. That's all I'm saying. All I'm saying, Jalen, don't have no bad games because I got to come here on Monday mm-hmm. and I got to tell it. Mm. I got to tell it. But you have all the information, and not once have you ever busted. Uh, it. I don't know. Skip, I don't get it. That hashtag be trending. Uh-huh. Bus skip up, be trending. People daily. are laughing. No, they're not. Yeah. They already know. It I should get be you. hashtag crack skip up because <laughs> it makes me laugh, right? No, that's good. You can start using that on Instagram. <laughs> no, 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 no. You know, you're what crack me up? Yeah. Well, just yeah. hashtags. You have to use those. Oh, for you Instagram. do. I don't. Yeah, I've never used later. the hashtag in my life. Yeah, no. <laughs> There's you a had one to debate against me in your life. On on Hazel, I used National Dog Day. Hashtag. That's very cute. No mercy. Way back in 2011, Kevin Durant and LeBron James joined forces to record a rap song called It Ain't Easy. We had never heard the recording until now. Mm. It has finally come out, and uh, Durant name dropped Skip. Let's take a listen. Yeah. Relaxing in the C6 bands is how I get around. I got the money, but that's the root of all evil. I stay the same, but it's changing all the wrong people. Yeah, uh, and every hater all the same. I'm feeling like the world is Skip Bayless and I'm LeBron James. Look, now I got a body full of tattoos. Everybody say that I'm changing, that is not true. Single parent, just mom, dad gone. It's all good, pops. You made a kid strong. Ain't no way you can stop this kid. Mama, mama knew was a star from the baby bib. I had to make it out. No other option. No, ain't no good in the world, uh, that I ain't copping. Yo, y'all already know what it is. Uh, now let me just spread my wings while y'all listen. To the voice of this hook sing. You think that it's easy? I kind of like that. You think that it's easy? <laughs> I didn't make it do. I make it look easy over here, Skip. We're all Baylor. dancing. Get him, King. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, Skip. After hearing this for the first time, <sighs> yes. your reaction? So, background. I first heard about this back in 2011 Mm -hmm. when the lyrics were leaked, but we couldn't actually hear the song. But I did know that Kevin had rapped a line about me, and I knew that the line was, I feel like the world is Skip Bayless and I'm LeBron James. And I talked on TV about the line because I thought it was funny. But remember what was going on in 2011. This was during the lockout lockout that lasted until Christmas Day. But LeBron was coming off the epic meltdown in his first finals with the Heat against the Dallas Mavericks. So to date, at that point in history, LeBron had been swept by the Spurs and he had flamed out against the Dallas Mavericks. Mm -hmm. So he was 0-2 in the finals. But what also shook me up about that time was that, that Kevin came across in the song 
as such a criticized player, and I was his biggest fan. You know, I'm still a big fan yeah. of his, but I was really a big fan back in 2011, and he had already won two scoring titles at that point. Now, Destiny was about to match him against LeBron in the next right. NBA oh, Finals, yeah. and LeBron finally broke through and won. But I couldn't understand the, oh, whoa, am I from Kevin Durant at that point because I didn't think he had any, oh, whoa, to be upset about, right? Like, he was really good, man. Right. And it looked like they were the team on the verge, and they were about to break through and Mm-hmm. wipe out my spurs and get to an NBA Finals. They kind of flamed out themselves in that Finals. But now I read last Friday when the thing finally dropped and was made public that this producer, Frankie Wahoo is his name, he is suggesting that LeBron's camp tried to bury this song low these many years right. because they thought LeBron came off badly in it. And, and he, the quote from Frankie Wahoo is, this is the first time LeBron's been human. He's not good at this. Mm. That made him seem less of a superstar in the public eye. If you hear LeBron James rapping subpar, that would kind of take away from his, his image a little bit. I, I, don't, okay? think, I don't think that's right. what played into it, Skip. I think the part, the part about him polishing up, he got goons polishing up the chrome. You don't, he doesn't want that aspect of it. Okay. It's, just, it's just a rap song. Okay, so to me, and this is my two cents, and you can say, what do I know? But when I heard it Friday, I didn't think LeBron was that bad. I, no, I thought he was decent. Yeah. I, I thought, again, was he great? No, but he was decent. So if this had been released in 2011, would I have shamed LeBron for that performance? Nope, I wouldn't have. And I, I actually think Kevin's pretty Kevin, good. Yeah, Kevin, Kevin, Kevin had the lyrics on him. Yeah. But you know what? <laughs> After listening to this song yeah. and, 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 and hear what uh, KD had to say, you've been hating for a long time. It's 2018. They wrote this in 2011. 2011. So th- you've been hating for at least seven years. You mean I've been truth telling? No, you've time? been hating. Wait, it- I just told you. I just framed the history of that moment. LeBron had an epic meltdown in games four, five, and six. He disappeared. The chosen one became the frozen one. How can you defend that? I, was that hating or truth telling? All I know is this. What? So all I want to know is that. Yeah. Dez Bryant say you be hating. Mm. KD say you be hating. Mm. Bron say you a be hating. A lot of people hate the yeah, truth. Yeah, you be they hating. They hate the truth, right? They don't, they don't say mm. O'Shea Sharp mm. be hating. Because mm. they know I be spitting it for real. So are you jealous that somebody hasn't rapped lyrics no. about what a big hater you are? Because I'm not a hater. Oh. They, they already know. I Shea think, gonna they, give, no, I you, think you have turned into the biggest hater. No. You no. are offending player after player because they say, this X player has turned on us? No, I didn't turn on them. Yeah, you no, did. No, 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 no. Huh? I'm going to get, I'm, I'm, they know I'm going to tell the truth, though. Oh, the, no, you ain't telling the truth. Just, you hate me. I, 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 you doing what we am call... Am I right? No. Yes, I'm You're right. doing what we call lightweight hating. Oh, lightweight yeah. hating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As opposed to heavyweight hating? Yeah. Uh, because I was right about... I, I predicted LeBron's collapse before he collapsed. That's interesting. And he huh. pumped himself back up. Now look at him now. Huh. On top of the... And looking like Leonardo DiCaprio in Titanic. Mm-hmm. On top of the world! Mm. Yeah, flying high! Mm. You heard him. You heard what he said. Well, Thanks, Pop. You made me a strong man. Yeah. Well, you know what my friend Stephen A. Smith reported back in that during that finals in 2011, the heat, first heat finals, that LeBron went back to his hotel room in Dallas after they won game three at Dallas yes. to put themselves up two, through two, two games one. to one. And he made a list of, I'm going to tell these people so, and I was number one on that right. list. Like he was going to come after me as soon as they close the and deal. He do, and then you know what he realized? What? He says, I, I don't play this game to say I told you so. Oh. I play this game because I love this game. Huh. And so once he got rid of that hit list, he can free himself. Oh, because he, when you he start... freed himself so much that he completely disappeared in the next three games. How is that possible? No, 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 no. Have you ever seen a no. superstar meltdown like that? I've never seen anything like that. He said... It's interesting. When he won, mm-hmm. this was what he was going to do. Mm. He lost that f- series. Mm. He realized that he was playing for all the wrong reasons. Oh. I'm playing to show people. I'm oh. going to tell you. No, he played the game because he loves it. Oh. And if you love the game and you be good at it, they ain't need to tell you that. After you saw what he did to your Oklahoma City Thunder, well, you, you knew you it. Well, how did you explain what he did in that first year with the Heat? I, I don't get that. It happened. It just happened? Okay, what happened in, What happened to the Thunder? You, you're, what happened you're to your Spurs? changing the narrative again. No, what narrative? You're not explaining how he melted down. There was no explanation no, needed. Everybody said, we've never seen anything like that. I didn't say that. Everybody said that. Huh. So, so he's the only one. So when Magic Johnson, when they get they coined well, the term. Magic didn't melt down. The man he dribbled out the clock. Okay, he but that was out the clock. one mistake, one faux pas, okay. one moment. Okay. Did it happen in game four, five, and six to Magic? No. No. Did it happen to LeBron? Yep. 
he had a bad series. It was so he's horrible. the only one that's ever had a bad series? No, but it's, uh, superstars, not, no one's ever done that before. Stop but this. he bounced back, and now he's 3-6 and six in the finals. That's pretty good. The best player. Yeah. No player can say they've been the best player for a decade straight. Mm. He's been the best player for a decade straight at the bare minimum. No player? No, zero. What part about zero didn't you understand? That guy up in Chicago can't say No, that? not for a decade straight. Not for a decade? No, because Magic, because you got to realize, his first six years in the league, he, ah, Magic and Bird was getting all the MVPs. What do they call They them? were getting all the finals. Jesus and Sneakers? They're already Call it what you want to. <laughs> Jesus and Sneakers. Yeah, they call him Jesus and Sneakers. Mm. But old God, old Larry Bird and Magic Johnson kept him down. <laughs> they held him down. They said, you the son. You my son. Shannon. Yeah, you know it. You're getting blasphemy. You know it. Did you're, you know it? You're going to get struck by lightning. Let me ask you a question. In the 80s, how many finals did Michael Jordan appear in? You out. know? I just know for at least 10 years, he was by far the what best player. What 10? He's the greatest player ever. Shane. What You got to give it up. What 10? Any 10. I mean, through 98. 88 to 98. Uh, uh no. Uh, yes. Bird and Magic said no, sir. Uh, no, sir, Ree. Yeah. No, sir, Ree. They would all tell you. No, they was. would not tell they me would. nothing. If Magic were sitting here right I now, mean, he say he was I, the I, best. That's what, you know, Ma- Magic real hard. Uh, I expect Magic to say that. Uh, Magic going to, no, no, oh, 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 Mike. Oh, Mike, man, he had a tongue. That tongue yeah. be hanging out of mouth. He real good. Mm-hmm. Magic gonna say that. Bird gonna say that. But they know deep down inside. They do not. All them that. MVPs they had collected. Michael couldn't get one. You know this. He, but he was getting a scoring title, though, Skip. He was you know winning what? them scoring titles. It ain't easy. This this song it should be your theme song. Nah, it ain't easy. It ain't easy defending LeBron James. It is it easy. Ain't. It ain't. The it best, ain't easy going against me. If you don't mind me sure. asking, name the last time a player's been the best player in the NBA in year 15. Hmm. Well, that's sad commentary on the NBA right now, I guess. What you mean, sad commentary? Yeah. The man yeah. is 27, 8, and 9. Shannon, he finished 308th in individual defensive win shares. Don't give me best player. Best. Really? The best. Mm. The best. Huh. He was the best offensive player. He's the best shoot, NBA player. Shoot like Kevin Durant. Best NBA. You know Kevin Durant's better. No, stop doing that. Don't do well, that. Well, who was the MVP of the finals the last two years? That's all you need to know. So if, Case closed. Is that how we're doing it? Yeah. So are you telling me Nick Foles is the best player in the NFL? Because he was the he was the Super Bowl MVP. Has he been back to back Super Bowl? Whoa, MVP? whoa, 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 whoa. Back to back? He took down Tom. Think about it. Ooh. Tom Brady lost to Nick Foles and Eli. Bill Belichick took down Tom Brady. No, Tom, no, 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 Skip. He Don't did. do it. See, now you hate I, no Coach I'm not Belichick. doing it. You do now it. Now you hate no Coach it. Belichick. He took him down. I mean, look, at least did LeBron. Malcolm Butler Le, play Le, in that LeBron game? is losing to KD, yeah. uh, Steph Curry, Tim Duncan, all these. Mm-hmm. Nick Foles? Mm-hmm. Is Nick Foles going to have a gold jacket? Hmm. How many of those offensive players going to have a gold jacket? In football, do you get to play both sides? Do you get to play defense and offense? You no, not, not up, today, you not didn't, anymore. You, you didn't say that. Can Tom Brady play safety? You didn't say, you didn't say anything about him playing both sides when, the, when they shut the Rams down. Huh. You didn't say anything about that. When who shut the Rams down? The New England Patriots. Yeah. The greatest show on turf oh, held them to yeah. 20 points. No. You didn't mention anything. Tom Brady was just did, a baby. Did, hold on. Just no, 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 no. He was. But did, man, he, in the was end. Was he defense? Whew. What did he play in defense? Was Tom Brady not clutch at the end of that game? Oh, uh, so in other words, hold on. I just want to make sure I'm mm-hmm. make sure I'm hearing you correctly. Mm-hmm. So Tom Brady doing his job by getting them in field goal range mm-hmm. is different than Aaron Rodgers doing his job getting them in field goal range, or LeBron James doing his job setting someone up for a wide open pass. Shannon, he's won five Super Bowls and played in eight. It's over. He, so he, he can't be the, three and six. You can't be the great. Aaron, wait a second. Aaron Rodgers is five and six in the postseason. He won six is one Super Bowl. So you got to give it up. So the, okay, okay. This is a losing okay, battle okay, you're fighting. Okay, LeBron, LeBron, you can't be the goat mm-hmm. because you're three and six. Three and Tom six. Brady, you can't be the goat because you're five and three, and Joe mm-hmm. Montana is four and zero oh, mm-hmm. with no interceptions, mm-hmm. all TDs, no INTs. Five more than four. Whoa! You mm-hmm. lost. And wait a second, those three include the luckiest pass in the history of the Super Bowl and also includes a big asterisk because Bill Belichick failed to play Malcolm Butler and gave up 41 points Uh, to Nick Foles. You see how you do that? Tom Brady set the all-time playoff record in a Super Bowl. You see what you did? All-time, 505. You can't get better than that. And I had to stay open late. He's 40 years old. Jenny, you had one of the most juicy losers, haven't you, for Minnesota? Oh, Oh, yeah, I 
Have I? I had a juicy Lucy waiting on Tom. But what I did, I sit him in the middle of my restaurant because I wanted everybody to see that look oh, on his so face. Oh, so you, you moved your restaurant to Minneapolis? Yeah, oh, I brought it to Minneapolis. Mobile. Yeah, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, it's, it might be oh. in Atlanta this year, too. Is it somebody... like a meal on wheels or no, something? No, it don't be a little wheel. <laughs> <laughs> like a food truck? Shannon yeah. driving? Yeah. I don't know. Oh, oh. I take this thing on the road. I made sure everybody see it. Really? He had his head down. Did he? I think he had his head up. He just set a playoff record. He took the L. Hold on. So Ooh. let me ask you a question. Whew. Should LeBron James, after he averaged a triple double, should he have his head up did because he averaged a triple double? Did his coach sabotage him? No. No, J.R. Smith sabotaged him. Oh. And then LeBron melted down like I've never oh, seen him. Oh, melt nah, down. he oh, melted down. Yeah. Don't do that, Skip. Mm, That's so unbecoming to you. Mm. See, I told you, KD, you got it right. He yep. hating KD. Yep. You're right, KD. He hating. <laughs> We started with Do a I rap, hate KD? we have gone. No, you hating on KD and Braun. I'm not hating on KD. I've never hated on Oh, but you... He's but, hated on me. But you heard that, Jenny? You heard what he said? I did. I'm, I'm hate not it. hating on KD. He ain't mentioned nothing about LeBron. Now, we were talking about two people. He mentioned KD. I didn't... I, oh. That has been noted. What, what you call hate is my truth. <laughs> no mercy. Our next guest is a rapper, producer, and huge DC sports fan. His new EP, Free Lunch, is out Friday. Wally, welcome to Undisputed. How you guys doing? So, we're longtime adversaries, Wale and I. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? Today, Jenny, I'm going to be nice to him. I'm just going to sit back, oh, yeah. relax, You're right. let him have the floor, and let him speak on whatever Did he that wants Dallas, to speak That on. Dallas game humbled you. Yeah. Oh. Which <laughs> Dallas game? But the first the one? Mavericks ain't playing right now. Oh, I was thinking of the two games last year against Kirk Cousins and the Redskins. Did you just say last year? Yeah, last year. When we're talking about oh. when the season just started, you're talking about last Wait, year. Wait, we haven't played the Redskins yet this year. That's our arch rival, and those are the only two games that matter to Wally, me. Wally, you already said you were going to fall for his tricks. Yeah. Yeah. I know. You Wait, said you, weren't you realize do it. Dak Prescott was 4 and 0 against the Redskins? That's no problem. 4 and 0? That's, 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 no, that's, no that's, that, that, that's no problem. That's no problem. Wow. That's no problem, you know, what, was he, what was he saying? Wait, wait a second. Do you realize Kirk Cousins was one and six against the Cowboys? Are you glad he's gone? There's no problem. One six. I know you're. I have zero, I have zero problem with that. You have zero problem. What? Are you, how are you I'm feeling happy about Kirk. the Redskins? Because they I, I, look I think good we look good. I think you we look I think, good I think, for a day. Uh, <laughs> Well, you guys didn't look good for a day, so. <laughs> what they say, Shannon? They only, you only as good as your last game. Last game. <laughs> only as good as your last game. And I yeah. love Zeke. That's my boy. Is he really? Zeke I was my boy. That. You know what I'm saying? I got well, a lot of love. Where did that come him. from? That's just, you know, we be on the scene. That's my guy. That's my man. Yeah. Owner, not so much. He's a Ze he said Zeke's his guy. Zeke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just don't want Zeke to be his guy after hours, if you know what, what I mean. I don't, what do you I don't mean? want Wale to be partying what? with Zeke because I need Zeke, Zeke is to a young... be in early and to be watching Zeke, the tape. <laughs> Zeke is a young man. He need to enjoy his life and, and, <laughs> Not that and, and play hard and play hard. That's mm. what they all do. They've been doing this since the NFL first started. Play hard, party hard. Yeah, do it. Yeah. Play as hard, long, party hard. As long as you, as long as you on yeah. that field and practice in the morning. Yeah, that's, so, that's where you build the camaraderie. So tell me how good your Redskins are. What did you see? Um, I saw a lot of good blocking. I saw a lot of patient running by Adrian Peterson. Yeah. Um, and I saw a patient quarterback. Mm -hmm. um, I just saw a team that's just just playing together, and I saw an excited secondary, an excited uh, uh, defense, and mm -hmm. that's all you can really ask for game one mm -hmm. of the season. What about you guys? It was impressive. I give you. What about the Dallas Cowboys? I, I predicted they would lose game one because that was the wrong place, wrong time against the wrong team. Oh, that gosh. team is really <laughs> good on defense. Well, I just was told Luke Keekley's the greatest linebacker in the history of pro football. Nobody said that. So that's what they were telling me. So, so we, we had to deal with him, and he just shut us down. Took our running game away, took all the short passes away. Oh, one person, away. one linebacker did all that. Yeah, huh? Yeah, but so, now we don't have to see him anymore. You mentioned okay. Adrian Peterson. Do you believe he can sustain the way he ran? The thing, the thing about AP is, I think he's, I think he's one of the best running backs of all time. But he runs so aggressive, so hard that it's almost like you, 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 you hold your breath you, every, every time he runs. It's like, it's it, sometimes he runs like he's gonna give himself or somebody else a concussion. Right. Mm -hmm. And but that's just he's been playing like that since he was in high school. If you see his high school tape, so I really don't. No, like you, you really can't predict like the way you know how people's health in the NFL. It's, it's just any any given play, anything can happen. But um, I think I think our committee is good. Like mm -hmm. you know, uh, Chris Thompson and AP. It's a great balance. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Samaji P Ryan. I P. like Ryan, Samaji yeah. P Ryan. Oh yeah, he's good. 
Yeah. Uh, Didn't you play running back once upon a yes, time? Yes, I did. Once yeah. upon a High time. High school and a little in college. A little in college. Yeah. How would you describe your running style? AP-ish? I run scared. <laughs> <laughs> it don't touch me, man. I, I'm trying to. I'm. I'm a. You know, literally, you could just always hit the sideline and be out of there. Mm -hmm. High school, you could do that sometimes. Yeah. College, they wasn't having it. No. Nope. Them boys was faster than me, man. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you could run a little bit. I mean, I could, but hey, listen, man. You, need, you got them. You got them running back. You got them ex running back linebackers that's out there. That's, that, that one, they see you 150 pounds. Mm -hmm. They want to get a highlight out there. Yep. Yeah, he was running a little scared. You guys make a switch at the uh, quarterback position. Kirk Cousins goes to Minnesota. In comes Alex Smith. You like one more than the other? You As my man Triple H would say, it's best for business. <laughs> it was best for business. We saved a lot of money. You right. did. Um, in my opinion, Kirk Cousins is a, is a great player, but I don't know if he's a dog, though. Yep. I don't know if he's a, he, he a dog. And what I mean by that is I don't know if he got that killer instinct that's going that's going have that 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 dog in them when it's 45 seconds left in the game and you got 40 yards to go. I agree. I don't know, but he's he, he's he's great at you know, stalking the stuffing. He can stalk that yeah. stalk the stockings real good. I can. He can get them. He can fill up that stat board real yeah. good. Can Alex? Does he have any dog in him? You see me? Yeah, I know. I, I he's believe got so. Some, I believe. I believe he so. check down Alex. You know he's just gonna check the ball down while they stop well, I, playing. I'll take a check down. I take the check down, and he got Vernon. He got two great tight ends too. Don't so don't forget that. We got Jordan. If Jordan can Jordan stay healthy, man, you see him doing the yoga on the sideline. He be all right. <laughs> <laughs> yoga? He be all right. Yeah. He be all right. He doing yoga on the sideline. He doing so yoga on the sideline. That means he's going. He's guided. He's he's mm. he's, he's, he's he's limber. Mm. <laughs> so you got Never the takes. Redskins winning the NFC East. I think we got a good shot. Long pause before that answer. No, because I I, I like to process my answers. Mm -hmm. I like the questions. Unlike mm -hmm. you, I like to process. I like to think about it. I, I'm thinking about what, what what the Giants have going on. Eagles. The the Eagles, but the Eagles look like the Eagles look like Eagles look a little sketchy right now. A little, sketchy. little bit, just yeah. a little bit. Yeah. But we all know, you know, when, <laughs> certain teams getting into that rhythm and just, it's, it's good night. Mm -hmm. And the Eagles is one of them teams when if they turn it on. It, it, it could be a good night for a lot of mm -hmm. people. So pick it. Redskins win it. I don't think you're very. I confident. think that. I think that. I think that we. I think we. We. We, we get. We get. T we get ten wins or more this year. This year. Ten wins. Yeah. But hey, I also. Gruden I think. Your head I, I think. Coach? Yeah. Really? Why would you? Why would you, you insult like our head coach like that? <laughs> why would you insult? Mr. Why would you insult Mr. Snyder in this organization like that? <laughs> Mr. Snyder, I, I don't like anything about the Redskins. I'll insult anybody. I don't like anything about the Cowboys. I realize that. I don't like the name. I don't like the colors. I don't like the owner. I don't like his, where his political beliefs are, but we won't go there right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you just went. Oh. Yes, yeah. I did go there, but yeah. I, return, I return shortly. <laughs> I'm back now. Okay. I'm center. Well, you don't have the confidence. Now I'm going to stay. Me and Jordan Reed, we're yeah. going to do yoga okay. together. Okay. okay. You don't have the courage or your convictions to pick your Redskins to no, win. No, I just believe football is a game that's, that's not like that, oh. like, you know. I don't right. think it's like that. I think that we can get 10 wins, but I think that, you know, maybe the Eagles might get 11. Huh. You know what I'm saying? I think we're going to have a very competitive conference. How are you going to get 10 when the Cowboys are going to get 10? 10 what? Wins. <laughs> wins? With yeah. who? Ezekiel playing? Elliott and yeah. Dak Prescott. And who's and top catching, five defense? Who's catching the ball? Huh? I don't even care. Like some Costco players? Yeah, Costco, Costco workers. We got lots of Costco. Costco workers. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they got to receive. They better call yeah. Daz back. Just yeah. call him. Oh, um, don't, don't say that. Don't say that. Oh, he going to get upset. He won't Daz back. He triggered. He triggered. <laughs> Look how triggered he is. Look how triggered he is. He mentioned Daz. <laughs> <laughs> Throw him Daz, Wally. Throw him Daz. No, I'm dead, dead you know, Wakanda. Right there, I wasn't throwing up the X. I was just throwing up. <laughs> Dez. That's all I was the doing. The thing about Dez, he get open, though. He, he get open. He, and he led the league in drops. He led the league in lack of separation. That's what he led in. That's Sorry. not even a stat. Well, I just made it up. Yeah. It's true. <laughs> Well, Led the league in lack of separation. <laughs> ask ask the Hall of Famer. Am I right, Hall of Famer? <laughs> yeah. Dez can't separate like no. he once could. And the thing, but he, but 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 if you throw it with in in in, in a with his his bubble, he can get it. He can. It, he's it, athletic. That used to be the case. You don't and think he, he has that anymore? No, no. For what they were asking to do, the problem that I have with Dallas, I had no problem with the Cowboys moving on from Dez. The problem that you have, that I have with them, is that they didn't replace him with anyone. Mm. You look at what they brought in. Michael Gallup, uh, Terrence Williams, you move him up. I guess he's the number one now. Cole Beasley, he's mainly a slot receiver. Deontay Thompson. Alan Hearn? I mean, 
That's what you replaced Dez with? Hearns was all right, though. Wasn't he with the Jaguars yeah. last year? No, he was all right that yeah, one, one year, 2015. Year. He ain't been good in a while, Wale. I think that it was things outside of actual production on the field that that, that was his demise in Dallas. Mm. Oh, yeah. Um, but I, 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 if you're telling me that Dez, Dez can't be a starting wide receiver in the NFL, you tripping. Oh, he can be a receiver. <laughs> but here's the thing. But when you've been that guy for such a long time, being it's hard to is, be. It's hard to be it's something. Hard, yes, absolutely, yes. absolutely. You, you were I, I can't. Th- I can't think of many receivers that transition from that guy to a guy on yeah. the team. I can't think of that many. You're living in people. the past. You're living in 2014. I mean, I'm fine with him not playing with y'all. Like, please, <laughs> because he did a lot to us. So, are you fine with LeBron James playing for the Los Angeles Lakers? Oh yeah. What you? I mean, I know that's your that's your cup of coffee every morning is looking at a picture of LeBron. I, I don't know. drink coffee. Yeah, exactly. Because mm. you look at a picture of LeBron, and you get like, LeBron. <laughs> 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 yeah. You look at a picture of LeBron every morning and go, Wow, I'm awake. I mean, he's the best Man. player of our generation. Really? I mean, yeah. Well, what about that Durant guy? Yeah, he's great. He's, he's a good. He's, he's great. The MVP of the last two finals. I don't know how he's that happened. He's great. Yeah. Um, when you have to double team like seven people, oh. <laughs> like you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you got you got to understand. You got to yeah. you got you got you got players, man. You yeah. got you got people to dance with. Yeah. And I, I'm not taking nothing away from Kevin. He's seven foot that can shoot threes and dribble and he drive and everything. That. Yep. Don't. So you're a LeBron worshiper like this guy is. I'm so. not a LeBron worshiper. Yes, you worshiper. are. Yes, you no, are. No, because I I pre- admit it. I prefer like I I enjoy watching Kyrie Irving, John Wall. John and, Wall? And, and, yeah. You enjoy watching John Wall? I enjoy watching John Wall. Yes. God. Five. What is he, like eighth best point guard in the league? I don't know. What do you? Huh? So, <laughs> nah, he's trying to do <laughs> it. He's like, ah, ah, got me. So, nah, yeah, LeBron yeah, John, and purple and gold. Do you like that look? Yes, I do. Okay. I do. Um, just, I mean, from, from a financial standpoint, I, I think that is great for the city of L.A., like, they needed somebody like a blockbuster yep. player. Um, there's a lot of people on that team that are, 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 are superstars or future superstars, like like a Josh Hart, you know, Ingram. Um, it'll be interesting. There's you, definitely... You, wait, a, uh-huh. you didn't mention Lonzo. No, yo, Lonzo's great. Lonzo's yeah. great. I, I, I mean, I, I think Josh Hart is better than Lonzo, in my opinion. That's just my opinion. That's ridiculous. Um, Go ahead. Uh, it's actually not, but um, <laughs> you know, um, I think that I think Josh and 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 Bron and 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 Zoe. You like Kuzma? Uh, yeah, I love Kuzma. Love the Kuz. Mm-hmm. I think Kuz is good too. Mm-hmm. I think they got a great young core, and um, like I, I also think that there's some things up LeBron's sleeve, and you know, Le- LeBron's a GM too. You know what I'm saying? I think there's some things up his sleeve for next year, mm-hmm. and that that'll be interesting. So, how many more championships does LeBron win? Long pause, hard mm. question, don't know the answer, unsure. One. 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 Yeah. Right. One. I, I said he's going to get at least one. Yeah. At least? You, you got like seven. No, I didn't say that. Yeah. I just well, think the NBA is getting better, and the, the, they don't have much time to get it rolling. They got this year. Um, I don't think they're going to get – I think I don't – you know, I mean, I don't think anybody's really picking them to go, like, past the second round. No one's going to go to state. Oh, they're going to they, 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 yeah. be Golden State. Boogie, but they're, gonna get out, they're going out of the first round. They're getting out of the first nah, round. No, not the first one. Maybe. No, I'm saying they're getting out of the first oh, round. Oh, yeah, they're getting out. Yeah. yeah. Well, it depends where they land, though. Wait, wait a second. How are they going to beat Golden State in the first round? They're not playing. They're going to be the eighth place. He's, one. Be no, <laughs> He's obsessed. He's obsessed. He's so obsessed. <laughs> He's obsessed. Three four, he, he knows. He knows that's not eight true. Plays oh. one. He knows it's not true. Maybe LeBron will get a new rule. The only thing that's scary is that LeBron has to play like Harden and. And all of these, like like the, the DeRozan and those deals, like you got to play against a lot of talent in the West Coast, uh, like all the time. Mm. You can't bully like he did in the East Coast. He was bullying. <laughs> he was. He's not. Cakewalking. He, he's not going to. It can't happen this time. Like, mm-hmm. We're gonna bully. We're gonna bully the West. Oh yeah. Well, yeah, we bully came to the West, West to mess with the West. Okay. Yeah. I like. We got tired, like, of, we got tired of beasting the East. I like that talk. <laughs> I like it. I want to be right see there. It. Open at night. Rock you, I love me. LeBron. I love LeBron, but he. I know he gets frustrated, man. I know when things ain't going his way, that boy gets frustrated. He melts down. You know what I'm saying? Ain't and nobody melted down. Melt it down. But that's different. Now, you know, in Cleveland, it's overcast, it's snowing. It's... Out here in L.A., it's lovely. 
all the time. True. Lovely day. Can't really go wrong. Oh, you can't go wrong. Does it rain in Southern California? Never rain. Yes. It rained yesterday. (laughs) (laughs) So glad you were here because you you had this guy going a bit. A little bit. Come back anytime. He's my arch nemesis. He knows, you know. I'm He's triggered. Sleep tonight. Oh, you got to say LeBron, LeBron. He's like, Now we have to take out all the. Thank you for being here. Oh, they got Rick Lou Dane's contract, too. We ain't talking about that. He got another, got 30 plus million next year for somebody. All right. You know what? Minnesota. I, Minnesota. I have to admit this. What? I still love you. Huh? I still love you. I can't I, help I love you too, man. Okay. Wow, you guys. It's ended with a cherry on top. My, my eyes are sweating. <laughs> Come back anytime. <laughs> no mercy. Thanks for listening to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm Jenny Taft. Join us again at 9.30 a.m. Eastern on Monday for another week of Undisputed. We'll see you then. Fox Sports. One of one. one.